Welcome to SourceCAD. If you've ever opened Revit, clicked on the masking tools and then started blankly wondering what now? Well, this video is for you. Today, Paul is walking you through the entire concept of Revit masking right from scratch. Now, we're starting from a blank slate and exploring all the different ways you can create mask forms, which is the foundation of any great conceptual model in Revit. The next topic is how to carve out voids to refine your design, then how to revolve a circle into a 3D form and even how to build more complex shapes like roofs, forms using massing techniques. Now, whether you are an architecture student, a new designer or someone who just wants to master the early design phases, this one's going to be gold. Let's get into it. So to start off, inside Revit, and in this case you're using Revit 2025, you can just start your model by clicking on New and specifying the architectural template. So if you don't understand how all these other templates are used, kindly check our video which I've linked down on how to start up your new Revit design. So after it has opened, the next thing that we'll do, will save. So just Control S and I can just save it anywhere within my laptop. So I'll just click on source code, then just give the name, then click on options, then change this backup options to maximum one, then just click on save. And just like that, our model is now saved. So once you've saved your model, you're gonna clearly see that the name has been updated here. So the tab that we are gonna focus on is the massing and site tab. So if you click on this option once, you're gonna find these main panels here. The one that we're gonna look at is the conceptual mass for now. And if I click on this drop down option, we're gonna find multiple commands here or options that we can work with. The first one being show the mass by view settings and the other one is to show the mass form and flaws for our specific model. So this option is important, especially if you wanna show the different flaws. So I'll just make sure to select it. The second option that we have here is in place mass. This is important, especially when you have an existing project, it's just a matter of modeling or designing your specific mass within the same model. But the good thing about Revit if you have already modeled it in a different place, you can just simply bring it in by clicking on this option, you can specify or load one from your specific libraries. So I'll click on close and you can also bring in from a different software, which is format and you can be able to manipulate it within your project. Not only that, if you are just to navigate back to architecture tab, you'll find this build panel and you'll find the component where you can also model in place the same mass object. And if you wanna insert your specific conceptual items, you can go to insert, click on load family and bring in your different items that you want. Great, so let's start our design. So under mass and settings, the first thing that we're gonna do is just to click in in place by mass. So if you click on this option once, we're gonna have this pop-up window. From here, you can specify the specific name that you want. If it's source code, for this case, I'll use SC, let's say AC1, and then I'll click on OK. And just like that, we are now into this specific area where we can be able to create our mass. And you can clearly see that our different options have changed. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just work on simple items. So we can just simply start on level zero and under project browser, you can change the different levels that you wanna work with. So I wanna have my 3D, so I'll click on this uh, expand tree, double click on 3D just to add it here, go back to level zero, click within the workspace, hit on WT on my keyboard. And if you're interested on all these keyboard shortcuts, kindly check our free blog that we have below this video. So the first item that you can simply make is just simple shapes, let's say cubes or cuboids. So I can just click on this rectangle option and I can just simply draw within this workspace that we have here, just any area. So from that point to that point, and we can clearly see that an item has been created here. Once you've done that, you can now just simply go to this option, which is form create, and you can click on this drop down option to select between these two options. The first one is to create solids, while the next one or the second one is to create a void. So let's just create a solid. So I'll just gonna click on this option once, and just like that, it has created this specific solid. And if you're satisfied with this, all that you have to do is just to click on finish mass, and just like that, now we have this specific mass created within our area. And you can be able to extrude it or increase the extrusion or reduce the extrusion by using these grip commands or options that we have within this area here. 
Not only that, if you're not satisfied with how things look like, you can still go back there by clicking on this edit in place just to jump back within this specific area and edit specific items. You can be able to drag these different coordinates so as to expand it or even change the direction in any direction that you want. Let's say having a slant like this and so on and so forth. So you can manipulate your specific mass in various ways that you want, not only just specific lines, but if you go to 3D, you can be able to manipulate even specific lines, let's say like this and different faces, because you see this side is way elongated or way higher versus this other side. And if you focus on specific corners, let's say on this specific corner here, you can be able to manipulate more options. You hover your cursor over this area, hit on tab a couple of times, so as to make sure that you have this option. And now you can be able to manipulate it only that specific point and get the results that you aim for. Great, having that done, let's just click on finish mass. So this is the mass that we have, while well, this is a footprint that we have for our mass. Not only that, we can still create other complex shapes and items. If we just go back to mass in insight, click on place insight, and we can still give it the same name, let's say SC, in this case, two, click on okay. And then we can start using the same commands. Let's say we go with the circle here, so we are currently level zero. So I'll go with a circle here and I'll just click there. Then I'll change this to level one. Then I'll go, let's say with something like an inscribed polygon. I'll click on that. I'll click on, let's say this uh, center of this specific circle, then simply click at the very edge. And then currently saying that none of the items that we created will be seen because obviously this is level zero. So if we jump back to level one, we're gonna simply see it. Once that's done, you can just simply click on uh, these items that you have here or select them. Let me just select them within the 3D. Then I'll open my dashed window selection just to make sure that everything is selected like this. Then I can either go with the solid form or the void form, but in this case, let's just work with solid form. And just like that, we have this complex shape already formed within Revit. After that's done, you can just click on finish massing and just like that. Not only that, we can even go a bit further and create even other items or other shapes within this specific item. And how do we do that? It's just a matter of selecting it, just going back to edit in place. And in this case, we can just come up with certain shapes that we can use to create a void. So we can go, with, let's say with a circle, then I'll specify my placement level at level one and making sure that I draw on face rather than on work plane. So I'll click on this, then I'll just simply click around here, the center, then something of the sort, then I'll just go back to inscribe polygon, then I'll change my level to level zero, making sure that it's still within the face area, then I'll just target the air at the center of this specific circle, draw it something like that, open my dash selection window or even my full selection window to make sure that only these two items are selected, then I'll just simply go to void, so I'll click on this drop down, click on void, and just like that, we now have this specific void within our specific mass, and if I click on finish, just like that, we have these complex, beautiful shapes for our specific masses. And not only that, especially when working within MEP, you can just simply select your specific mask, click on edit in place, and within this properties area, you can give it an omni class by just clicking on that ellipse, select the category that you wanna work with. Let's say in this case, we are working with a mechanical equipment, I'll click on that. Then I can specify if it's an equipment for furnishing, I can select this code, or I can open this drop down to go even further to the specific item that I want. Let's say it's laboratory, I'll select this item, uh, something like this or something like that, click on okay. And just like that, the same Omni class number will be adopted for this one. So I'll click on finish. And just like that, if you click on this item again, you'll find more options down here that you can even use to manipulate even further. So you can edit the flaws, specify the area, so on and so forth. But what if you wanted to create something revolving or something like a circle? It's still quite simple. We just need to jump into massing and sight. Then I'll just simply click on in place mass and then I'll just give it a name. Let's say AC uh, ring dash sphere for this case. And then after that's done, it's just a matter of now starting our design. So I'll just start simply with our reference plane. So I'll just click on this option once or click on double P on your keyboard to activate the same command. And I'm gonna be using the line option and I'm just randomly picking my areas. So first point randomly selected, second point randomly selected. Then I'll change this name, let's say to ring. And then I'll just simply click away. And now we have our reference plane. So I want to work on this reference plane, but within my 3D. So how do we do this? I'll make sure within my 3D, I'll just simply 
click on this drop down, click on set working plane, and I want to work with this ring. So I have it selected, but I cannot see it. So to see it, you just simply click on this option of show the specific reference plane, and you can clearly see that it's on this other side. So after that's done, it's just a matter of coming up with the limits. And to do this, we can either work with the model line or the reference line, but the reference line is usually better because it stays in place after we have already created our object, while the model line usually gets deleted within Revit. So I'll just simply click on reference. I'll make sure that I select draw on work plane because now we are working on this work plane and then I'll start with my random lines. So I can start with the line option just randomly, just start, let's say from eyeballing around that point and vertically down up to that point. Then I'll hit on escape and then let's come up with now the area at which we want our specific ring or sphere to be created. And for us to do this, I'll just use these two options, first line, and then I'll use center and arc option. And to do this, we're gonna use them simultaneously. So I'll first create my first line. So my first random point, my second random point, I'm not gonna click on escape or anything. I'll just simply click on start and radius. I'll click on that option. Then I'll click on this end point. Then on the second end point of our specific uh, area or circle, then I'll click at the end to get our radius. After that's done, I'll just simply hit on escape then hit on escape again. Then I'll just simply select on my specific curve, which is the item that is gonna be used to create our radius or our sphere, and also my main reference line or plane, which is this item over here. After that's done, it's just a matter of creating our form and it's gonna be solid. And just like that, now we have our specific circle in place or sphere. And if you click on either half of your sphere and you try to elongate it, you clearly see that you're restricted. Reason being is that you use the line of your half circle being a reference line. So to mitigate that issue of just simply undone, I'll check on this line that we have here. And from my properties, I'll undo this option. So I'll uncheck that and I'll just make sure that that's applied. And you can clearly see that now it's a white line. And I'll select on it, then I'll select on this reference line that we have here, then I'll just simply go to create form, click on solid, and in this case, if I click on this specific house sphere that I have on this side, and I use this direction key, if I move it outside, we can clearly see that now we have a ring. If I move it completely inside, we can clearly see that over here we have some cutting. So it depends with what you're targeting or what you want. And if I click on finish, just like that, we will have this ring created over here. All right, so let's look at how to create a complex roof within your specific design. So within your specific area, you can either specify, let's say on your specific level, let's say level one, you can come up with a random place that you want to create your, your roof area. And for this case, I'll just simply go to mass and site, then I'll go to model in place, I'll give it the name SC roof, then I'll click on okay. And then I'll just simply use reference planes as well. And they're gonna be three random places. So let's say the first one here, the second, I can change it, let's say to R1, then I'll click away. Then the second one here, I'm just simply randomly clicking anywhere. Then I'll just click on this just to change the name, let's say to R2. Then that other one over here, I'll click on that place, change the name, let's say to R3. And once satisfied, all I have to do is just to jump within my 3D. So I'll hit on escape, I'll select these three, I'll navigate to this specific area, and in this case, I wanna see them. So I need to set my working plane to that specific area that I'm working on. So let's start with R1, then it will be selected as we can clearly see here. After that's done, it's just a matter of coming up with our spline. So our spline line, we can just create it or we can use points to come up with this specific spline line. So to use points, we can just first place our points within our working plane. So I'll click on that. So we can have our random plane there, another one there, another one there, that's done. Then I'll select on my three items here, then click on this option to get my spline within this specific area. Then I can be able to edit it if I want it to be increased or reduced, so on and so forth. So let's now jump on this other view or this other plane that we have here. And to do that is still the same thing. Let's just change our working plane. Let's say from R1 to R2, and we want it to be shown. So over here we have it shown and we can do the same thing. So let's just now use this plane. So randomly just select in places, then I'll right click, click on cancel, 
then hit on escape a couple of times then i'll just change the walk -be lane again from here and i want to go to r3 and it's now selected then i'll just use this random selection points just randomly like that right click click and cancel and just like that we have that so after that's done it's just a matter of now coming up with a roof so i'll select on my first arc the second arc or spiral line the third split line then i'll just gonna go to this option click on solid and just like that we have complex shapes being created within revit so i've clicked on done and we're gonna have this option that it's uh, not gonna be computed it's not an issue but this is simply how it looks like and if i wanted to place something confirming to this specific roof that we have here i'll go to massing inside i'll click let's say on wall for now i can give it a specific wall or i can edit the ones that we have here but for this case, I can just go with something random. Let's say we just go with, I'm just simply eyeballing it. So let's say we go this custom made wall that we have here. I can just simply go with pick faces. Then I can specify that face just like that. We have certain objects being created looking like that. So you can specify the specific area that you want. Even if it's this complex shapes, you can always have this. Make sure you don't click on the same area so as to remove double selection. Even for this complex curves that you have here, you can still use the same option. And the secret within these areas is just simply under the structure where we have them with the option of being wrapped so that they can be wrapped around these complex shapes that we have created within our project. So that's the power of Revit. And you can clearly see how they're coming up along really, really beautifully. And they look really, really good. So you can change, let's say to realistic, just to have a view on how things look like and how beautiful they look like. So that's the full journey from basic solids to revolving shapes and even complex roof massing, all done in Revit's massing environment. If you've made it this far, the chances are you are ready to do a lot more in Revit than just boxy models and default tools. And guess what? We have got something that will help you build real architectural projects inside Revit from ground up. It's our Revit Architecture Essentials course and it's completely free. You'll learn how to model, annotate and present real world Revit projects. And at the end, you'll earn a certificate of completion that you can actually use, whether it's for your CV, LinkedIn profile, your job hunt or just leveling up. Check the link in the description or in the pinned comment. You'll be inside the course in under a minute. And if you've got any questions or you want us to cover something specific in Revit massing or modeling, drop it in the comments. It might become our next video. See you in the next one.